Now let's make it a little more interesting. Let's make it a little more dynamic. Let's have it uh, only change color on hover. Yes, we can do this in pure CSS. Don't be a smarty pants. We're going to do it with the directive. Uh, so what we can do is we can use this host property on the directive. So the way host works, the reason it's called host is because it's referring to the host element that this attribute is on. That's why it's called host. So it has nothing to do with like shadow DOM or anything like that. It's the element that this attribute is hosted on. So what we can do is we can set up events. And host is an object that just takes like uh, this, this syntax like this. So the key is the, is the event on the host element that we want to bind to. So we want to bind to the mouse enter event. Just like, just like you would write it in a template, surrounded by parentheses. So that's the key. And then the value is the function or the method that we want to call. In this case, we'll just say color. So when the mouse enter event is triggered on the host of this attribute, we want to execute the color method. Everybody see that? When this event is triggered on the host of this attribute, we want to execute this method. All right, so now we need to make that method. So we'll just take that out. We still need to keep this element ref here, although we're not going to use the constructor anymore. If we got rid of this, we won't have access to element ref. So we still need to keep that constructor there and initialize that um, metadata. So now we can say color, and it's just going to do that. So let's check that out. Let's see what happens. So it's white, that's perfect. We hover over it, it goes red. Ship it. Ship it, it's done. <laughs> so let's make it go back to what it was. So now we'll just say mouse leave. Um, go back, <laughs> default, or color. <laughs> color false or something. I don't know. Uh, color two. <laughs> color two. That'll work. Why not? And we'll just toggle back white there. Da, da, da. There we go. So any questions so far about this? No? Now let's set up like a, a default color that we can put that's optional that the person, that the template author can pass in. So as you've learned, we can use inputs for this. And just like on a component, there's two ways we can use inputs. We can use inputs here, or we can use inputs the way that Lucas showed you guys, which was is your preferred way? Um, so from my experience, if you read the source code, most of the code is written, most of the directives that they built are written like this. But most of the documentation wants you to use it the other way. Yeah. So That's why I was wondering if there's a kind of a rule that defines one what why you would use one versus the other. I think it's more explicit if you use the direct if you use the uh, the decorators. I think it's just more explicit um, because even though you define the inputs and outputs here, you still have to do like the setters and getters and initializers down here anyway. Right. So you might as well put them all in one place. That's the way I think about it. Is there any difference otherwise? No, there's no difference. So we're just going to use the decorators. <coughs> So now we'll just do an input. Oops. An input on um, default or uh, that's just so long. I don't put default color. I guess I will. Default color, and it'll be a string. And its default color will be 
red. All right, so now, now that we have that, we can actually use this input on the same host element that this directive is hosted on too. So because we made an input, we can grab this name here. But actually, you know what? I don't really like this name, so I'm going to use an alias. So this is a good opportunity to teach you guys what aliases. So we can type in a different name here uh, as an alias for the input that's going to be different than how we reference it here in, in the constructor. So this alias is how we would reference it in the template, and then this name is how we would reference it here. So I don't want to type this in on my template because I think it's too long, but it's fine here. So I'm going to call it something else in the template like uh, Don't do it. <laughs> okay. I wanted to so bad. I know. Uh, uh, we'll call it um, start. Yeah, DC, DC, DC. I like that. We'll do that. We'll do that. Good catch. <laughs> now, what do DC? Okay, cool. So we'll do that. And then now, if we go back and add an HTML, where is it at? Where did I put it? Angular 2 Rust website. Here you go, you're on it. Oh, wait, wait, where is it at? Angular 2 Rust. Oh, there it is. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Too many yellows. Okay, so there we have that. And then now I can say <coughs> DC. And then I could pass in a default color, which would be uh, orange. Yeah, we can do that too. So if we don't want to set up an other, if we don't want to set up a new attribute and we just want color to be an attribute, so let's set that. Let's do that. We'll do that, and then we'll say orange. And then what we'll do is we'll come back to our comp our directive, and then now what we'll do is we'll say we'll just change the the reference or the alias to be colorer, but we'll still reference this default color in here. So now what we do is when we go back, we'll say this dot default color. Oops, wrong one. So let's go check that out, see how that works. Blue, looks like something didn't go back. Color, or default color. Let's see what that is. Good old console.log. Fine. You're logging. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm logging uh, wrong. Thing. Thank you. <clears throat> ah, that's on the fine, too. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Let's just not do the alias and say. Color or make things complicated. Did you put the color in the issue? So is there anything we assign to it? Uh, let's put the raw string in there. I wonder if it's expecting a model. You might. Uh, no, like you, that. Yeah, I think you do. You have to wrap it. And Yeah, that was it. There we go. All right, so we got that inputs. So and, and, that, and then you can imagine it pretty much goes on and on and on from there as far as with um, attribute directors. There, there are other things in here like properties where you can set up bindings from different inputs directly to properties on the host element. Like one for one, I want to set an attribute called tooltip that binds to the text property. Yeah, you can do it yourself inside of here, but the properties will do it for you.
documentation there is kind of lacking though. So 